What's up, people? Mark here. Um, the more things change, the more they stay the same. You know, I, I miss being here in my Joe Boo's man cave. You know, this desk is where I started out here with this first locker, and then I kept adding a piece and a piece and a piece, and I used to be over there. And it's amazing how this has evolved and changed for me so much, and it's been incredible. And so I'm uploading my morning video, and in my mind I kept thinking about this because I keep hearing everybody say, blow it up, blow it up, blow it up, all the experts. You can't sign Dak Prescott. And see, the thing is, I love history, okay? I love history. You know, that's why I love the Red Brick House. Because you can look back at things that have happened, and you can go back and compare it. You know, it, it, there really is no new ideas. The, yes, technology gets better, but it's still the same thing over and over again. And so I started thinking, I said, I need to go back a little bit in history here and see where we were. And this is from... 2020. I want you to listen to this, and I'm, I'm going to be late to get to work, but this is really important. I want you to listen to this and listen to the recommendations that they had for the Cowboys as well as the Eagles. And I want you to listen to the forecast that they had for the Giants and the Commanders. You'll remember Dak Prescott ended up uh, getting injured and being out that season. But let's listen to the tape football team finding itself atop the division. The Eagles, of course, sitting there with that tie, so they have a chance. FPI still sees Philly as the favorite to win the division based on the tie. Should point out the Eagles have a tough game Monday night against Seattle, while the Giants play Cincinnati, which figures to be reeling coming off of losing Joe Burrow. So let's just, as we come out and sort of think about this for a moment, here's the way I view that division, and I want to see if you guys see it the same way. Bart Scott, I'll start with you. The two teams we expected to be good this year and expected to be battling it out for the division this year, Dallas and Philly, are both kind of payroll bloated messes, <laughs> while the Giants and Washington both have some nice young pieces to build on. You watch Washington yesterday. The running back is a rookie. The wide receiver is a second-year player. They got a ton of studs on that defensive line. They have a coach people really like in his first year. Giants have a lot of things going for them as well, and Daniel Jones is playing better. The way I look at that division, the Giants in Washington feel like the two teams on the come, and Dallas and Philly look like two, th two teams that need to hit that plunger and just blow the whole thing up and start over. Bart Scott, what do you think? I mean, I think you hit the, the nail right on the head, Greeny. When you think Cowboys about, and Eagles you know, should blow it up. And you think about Dallas. These are teams that have been in their winning cycle for, for a while. Now they have a quarterback in which they have to pay big money. You think about, you know, the, the uh, Washington football team. You think about the Giants. They have young quarterbacks, and now they have assets, and they have a ton of cap space. You talk about the Philadelphia Eagles <laughs> next year being $64 million. Wait, wait, wait. I want to stop right there. You think about the Washington Commanders – or I'm sorry, football team at the time, and the Giants with young, great quarterbacks, and that they are the teams that are up and coming, and that the Cowboys and Eagles, they need to blow it up. Over the cap, Dallas has a huge decision to make if they're going to pay uh, Dak Prescott $39 million. You have an agent, Tyron Smith, that's eating a lot of the cap up. I think if, you, if you're in Washington or if you're in, in New York, I think you you've got a Tyron Smith eating a lot of cap up. You feel good about your chances, especially if Alex Smith comes off the books next year. They'll be able to, you know, address the quarterback position, but have ton of cap space to maybe invite some talent to that division and to that football team. Yeah, and they have a I want you to think about that. The commanders will have a lot of money to invite a good quarterback and sign great free agents. Because what you have to remember is the commanders won the uh, the, the division that year, that COVID year, and of course, Dallas having lost Dak Prescott, you know, they came close to it with Andy Dalton, again, a veteran quarterback that some people thought there was no drop off. But let's go on. A coach that everybody likes and wants to play for. Mark, you've been on our show for so long now talking about, I know you love Dak Prescott. We love Dak Prescott. And if anything else, Dak Prescott's value, I think, has increased since he got hurt and we've seen what's become of them. But he is going to be a $39 million player next year if he plays on the franchise tag. And I just ran through the numbers. Zeke Elliott's getting paid a fortune. Amari Cooper, guys on that defense. Do you think the Cowboys need to blow it up and maybe that includes not bringing Dak back? 
Well, I don't, I don't know if that's, that's the move. You <laughs> got to bring Dak back. Like you said, his, his uh, stock just went way up because you see this team is completely lost without him, and it's going to take too much time to develop a young rookie with a team that needs to win now, that's built to win now when they paid all these guys to be there for this amount of time. And, God, they still have a guy wide open on this freaking punt, on this fake punt. That makes me so mad. But it's all right. Uh, yeah, I, I think you got to get uh, Dak back. Figure that out, but some of these other players that you paid big money to might need to get released, and you might have to eat some of that contract money. But uh, right now in that division, the stability uh, meter is Ron Rivera and Alex Smith. Those guys <laughs> have the experience. They're ready to win. Wow. They've seen it. They've done it. And that's what's going to win down the stretch. I think that's right. And, and, and Rob Nikovich, I mean, Sanchez said it exactly right. The Cowboys and Eagles are teams that were built to win right now, and they are a combined, I'm doing this in my head, they have a combined six wins and one tie, and however many losses that adds up to, 13, I think it is. So what does that say? If you're in that situation and you're a win-now mm. team, where are you, Rob Ninkovich? Well, they both both those teams made mistakes with who they paid. You look at the Eagles, they guaranteed $107 million to Carson Wentz, and right now he looks like he's not the guy for them moving forward. He's, he's not performing to the level of his contract. And then you look at the Cowboys – and what they paid Zeke, in, they paid a running back top dollar in a passing league. And everyone could say, yeah, well, they were running the ball and they had a great offensive line. But look around the league. There's a reason why other teams have decided let's spend our money elsewhere rather than the running back position. This year, Zeke leads the NFL in fumbles. Doesn't seem to have the same burst. So you look at Washington. They're a young team on defense. They look promising to me. I think that they could, they could definitely win the division this year. Maybe, maybe even sneak up on somebody in the playoffs because when you have a quarterback like Alex Smith who can make the right decisions, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. And they will get a home playoff game, assuming they're the ones who win that division. And just one quick final thought on mismanagement. You, you pay all that money to Zeke Elliott, which you didn't have to do, but you decide to do it, and then you go out and hire a coach. The book on him is they don't run the football. Mike McCarthy's teams never ran the ball in Green Bay, so none of it really seems to make sense. The problems seem to begin at the top. All right, I'm not going to say that the Cowboys have done incredible great things, you know, in the, that time. Although, they said, let that go, blow it up, fire Mike McCarthy. And since that time, they've won a playoff game, been to the playoffs three years, and won 36 games. They said that the Giants... And Washington were two teams ascending with young quarterbacks and money and that the Eagles and Cowboys were going downhill. So much for that forecast. So when you hear people talking about everybody in the NFC East got better, that the Cowboys, of course, are the worst, understand they don't get it right. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, I need to get my ass on the road because I got I got bills to pay, good people. Okay, and I got Michael Anthony Fitness Reaction waiting to go to work. As always, I appreciate you guys. Peace out. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report.